Good afternoon, everybody. It's Steve Baker again with The Great Game of Business. Welcome back. Uh, this webinar is based upon The uh, Great Game of Business and specifically the practice of uh, provide a stake in the outcome. This is usually the most interesting to people because it includes discussions about bonus plans. Everybody loves bonus plans and everybody hates bonus plans. So I thought I'd start out by reminding everybody kind of uh, where we are and where we came from. Um, the Great Game of Business is the smallest division of SRC. We're a company of 14 different divisions and about 1,500 people in Springfield, Missouri. Most of the divisions uh, remanufacture engines and engine components. Um, the Great Game of Business, my division, is the educational wing. We were originally established to handle a high demand for company tours and visits after the book's release 20 years ago. Um, and now we're the largest and most well-known resource for open book management training and education uh, in the world. Um, we brought the book back out uh, last July and uh, hit number one again. And the reason I think that happens is that it is, the ideas are evergreen and the, uh, the concepts are so solid and so well time-tested uh, that, that people uh, really find that they can implement them in any business you can imagine. Uh, Jim Collins said it's, uh, uh, what makes it great is consistency, alignment, and transparency, uh, but then it's that it's infused with core values and then we bring it to life with mechanisms, with real tools. And, uh, and that's what I want to talk to you today about is one of the most powerful things to get rapid results, uh, both financially and culturally, is to talk about uh, bonus plans. Now, um, as we've covered before, uh, Jack Stack and 12 other managers bought a dying division of International Harvester back in the early 80s and were so heavily leveraged that they had to uh, figure out a way to engage everyone into learning business, that open book management thing that was born in Springfield, Missouri. And they used the analogy of a game because Jack realized that, that people were really good at their jobs. They didn't want to become accountants. And so he used the analogy of a game because business and games have all the same elements. There's a goal, there are rules, the scoreboards, or of course the financial statements. We've been talking about that for several webinars. And there's a reward for winning. But no one will play your stupid little game if they don't know the rules, if they don't know the score or can't change it, and if they can't win. And this is the way it looks in the graphical form where the critical number, that one thing that defines winning, What's the one thing that absolutely we've got to do or nothing else matters? Uh, and then it's surrounded by know and teach the rules, follow the action and keep score. And of course, this section that we're gonna cover today, provide a stake in the outcome. In the great game of business, we say that uh, every employee is given the measures of business success and taught to understand them, right? The open book, but along with it, the education. Every employee is expected now and enabled to act on that performance to improve the performance of the business. And finally, if they do all that, they deserve a stake in the outcome. So let's get right to it. When we think about a stake in the outcome, we look at it as a number of things. I'm gonna just put one out there. I talk a lot about getting employees to think and act and feel like owners. Ownership is one way that you can do this, but I'm going to tell you, and I happen to sit on the board of directors for the National Center for Employee Ownership. I am an employee owner. I'm a true believer, but I'm telling you, not many people will share equity with their employees, and you don't have to. What we're interested in is teaching people business to think and act like a business person, to think and act like you do. So let's take ownership and set it to the side, and let's talk about what we came here to talk about today, bonus programs. That falls under the rewards and recognition portion. And let's be honest, when you provide a stake in the outcome in, form, in, in the form of a bonus, everybody thinks of this guy. Remember Clark W. Griswold? This guy was the poster child. He still is. We break it out I mean, in my family every year at Christmas time. I can't tell you how many years I was Clark W. Griswold. Do you remember what the premise of the movie was? Christmas Vacation was founded on the whole idea of a guy digging a hole in his yard for a pool he could not afford based on a bonus he didn't know if he was going to get. And that really drives people crazy because bonuses typically don't work because employees think they should be more. And owners are like going, how am I going to cover this? You know, I mean, it's not based upon the performance of the business always. And I'm going to tell you some ideas on, on really creating a great bonus program. So to do that, let's figure out what's wrong with bonus plans. Most often, they're discretionary. We call it the Santa bonus. What about if they're too complex, where you can't calculate it, you don't know what your day-to-day your -day activities are, that's the rocket science bonus. Some of them create silos when you only give 
uh, bonuses to certain people for their performance, that creates a dogfight. Um, and then there's sometimes this, uh, this idea of, uh, you know, who, who knows if it's going to win or not. If they got no buy-in in it, it's like a lotto bonus. And, and finally, I've actually been with a number of different companies in the past uh, where when we survey their employees and ask about the uh, incentive program, they, they say, what bonus? That's incredible. You should see the look on the owner's face when they say, what bonus? Oh, my God. You know, I can't believe they don't know about it. Well, here it is, guys, the secret. Get your pens out. The secret to creating a great bonus plan is people support what they help create. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean just ask people what they want as a bonus, because you know it would be anarchy. Uh, well, you actually, you know what it would be. Whatever it is, they would want more. That's human nature. I want more. What I want to do is give you some tools now that you can use. These are the building blocks of a good and effective bonus plan. Starting at the bottom, we want to first ensure the company's sustainability. Call it the financial security and improved value. First of all, we want to take care of the company. Job security, bonuses, raises, career opportunities come from a growing and sustainable and profitable business. Let's ensure that first. I'm going to throw out the idea of profit sharing right now. Just because we earn a dollar does not mean we share a dollar. In other words, what we're going to do is create what I call a threshold to ensure the company's security first. That could be a number of different things. I'm going to show you some examples in a moment, so bear with me there. Ensure the company's uh, uh, sustainability first. Then we're going to rally people around a common goal, and we're going to use the bonus to teach people business. We're going to make sure that what we're doing is uniting people. In our idea, a bonus plan should be team-based. We're going to win as a team. And then finally on top, we're going to give people a chance to win early and win often. This has to do with the idea of how we distribute the bonus and when, and lots and lots of communication. Uh, we always celebrate the win and we recognize the players. Sometimes there's always going to be some folks who, you know, are really standing out. But in a team-based bonus plan, how do you recognize them? I'll give you some ideas on that as well. So look at the way I've, I've built it. This would be as if we were building a brick wall. And that's right. That's the correct way. But what, the way that you actually design the plan is going to flip that a little bit. So the first things that we have to do is we have to determine that threshold to provide sustainability for the business. Then we determine the size of the pool. Then we determine the payout schedule. So on the threshold, what I want to do is think about how do we go to that gain share idea instead of profit sharing. So anything over the threshold, we will share. That's the gain share. And we have to figure out what that is. I'm going to show you exactly what this looks like. What is the, the big idea behind bonus plans is to be kind of an insurance policy to make sure that we continue to drive value and forward growth in the business. Um, Here's an example of how to start. Most people don't even know where the money goes. What I like to do is to say, hey, first of all, we got to teach people how money flows through the business, and then we got to teach them what's left over and what we're going to do with it. Some of it needs to go back into the business. Some needs to go to the shareholders. Back into the business includes just a few things. It could be debt. It could be savings. It could be assets. It could be inventories. It could be receivables. Um, if it's to shareholders, remember, we got to start teaching people if they're going to think and act like business people, we got to teach them what an owner's return really means. Um, it could be that we're paying down debt uh, because we bought someone out. It could be that we're uh, paying dividends uh, or that we're going to buy someone out. Uh, and again, these are quick ideas for a short webinar, uh, so bear with me. This is what I think of as the threshold. What is our baseline? What are the things, and these are just examples, of course, that we want to make sure that we cover first before we start paying bonuses? And these are some of the examples, add back depreciation. What about inventories, CapEx? Uh, what about debt? These are all things that are very important. And when you start to expose people to the idea of uh, what we have to, uh, uh, to set aside, if you will, to make sure that we are a sustainable business over time so that we do have job security and career opportunities and raises, et cetera, then we can talk about bonuses after. Establish your baseline first. And then I always like to say provide a significant portion of the gain. Here's what I'm talking about. Once you get past that threshold, we at SRC share back 50% of the gain, in other words, of additional dollars beyond that threshold, um, because now we're in it together. We're partners. And here's the interesting thing is we cap it. You don't have to cap it. There's lots of reasons to and not to. What I suggest to you is 
Immediately start thinking in different ways. Instead of thinking about percentages, think about the way your employees think. 10% of, of their pay is equal to 5.2 weeks of extra pay. Now, if in fact I gave you a gift card that was for 10% off at Starbucks, you wouldn't care. But 10% of salary, if you bring that back to me in the form of five weeks, holy cow, so you can see that 10 to 20% can be incredibly important. And we graduate the payments out so they have many, many chances to win. Are we at a level eight bonus? Are we at a level 11? Lots of ways to win. We rally people around a common goal because what we want to do is make sure that everybody's headed toward the same goal. Let's win or lose as a team. We only stick to one or two critical numbers, as we've discussed in earlier webinars. One's usually profitability-based and one is usually strategic. Sometimes it's like diversification, there's a hint. Um, we also want to get lots and lots of buy-in. Remember our mantra, people support what they help create. We use the bonus to teach people about the business because one of the most effective tools is that bonus. If people understand that to earn the bonus, they have to do certain things, they will start to teach you about the business as well. It also gives them line of sight. If they understand, like in the video we saw in the last webinar, um, people are actually predicting and forecasting not only their numbers, uh, but also their bonus. It's incredible how, how tightly they are bound uh, to the critical goals of the business. Um, also, we try to stop entitlement immediately. Check that baby at the door. If our bonus plan is tied to the critical number and we actually uh, achieve that critical number, let's say in those early days of SRC, the critical number was make the bank loan payment, do you think after 52 huddles, 52 lessons, and 52 forecasting sessions, all in the same thing called a huddle, do you think they learned that debt was bad and equity was good? Absolutely. The next critical number for year two was diversification. The idea is very simple. When the critical number changes and you continue to teach your people the business, entitlement is shut down because we're aiming at another goal that's important for the business and the more they begin to think like business people, the less entitlement will creep in. Um, I always uh, put the with them uh, in the right perspective. Make sure your people understand that bonus is bonus. It is not part of salary, like Clark W. Griswold pointed out in the, uh, in the uh, movie, uh, Christmas Vacation. Now, um, let's talk about this one, give people a chance to win early and win often. I wanna show you this before we close up. Um, people don't always feel like winners, and we wanna make sure that they feel, have a chance to win at work, because if they win at work, they will win more at home, and that will roll out into the community. Um, we like to pay frequent bonus payouts in the form of uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent payouts over the different quarters of the year. I'm going to show you a, a form in which that can manifest. Um, we say earn a bonus every three months. It keeps me in the game. The payouts are bigger, right, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent of the potential pool. And the thing is, is that um, those ranges can be anything. If we cap it at 20%, uh, let's say as an example, there are 20 levels in which you could win. It doesn't mean that you have to max bonus to still be a winner. You could be at 2%, it's still better than nothing, and it is bonus. It's incremental to their salary. We like to say that small wins add up to big wins. In addition to the bonus plan, we play mini games, self-funding incentive plans, if you will, um, inside departments and work groups to drive the overall big game, hence the bonus as well. A great way to get started. So here's the, uh, where I'll sit for a minute before we close so you can get an idea of how we pay this out. Uh, first quarter, 10%, second quarter, 20%, 30%, 40%. You could have a tremendous um, uh, first quarter, second quarter, and things fall off the amazing thing is you haven't paid out more and put yourself in a cash crunch in the business. If, in fact, you had a crappy first half, you could still pick up the 10 and the 20. You could get up to 60% at the end of the third quarter if you're reaching goals. The beauty of it is uh, it's not punitive. It is cumulative, and it's a great way uh, to keep people engaged. I hope that you'll want to learn more about the great game of business and our principles and practices. You can do that by going to greatgame.com slash intro7 for an introduction to open book management and the principles and practices of the great game of business. This is Steve Baker with The Great Game. Take care.